First off, you're looking at Rotom right there. Well, the inspiration for Rotom, at least. Yes, the fourth generation's first and only Ghost Electric Pokémon is a callback to this very game. Those Spark Ball items littering the ground? The spiritual predecessors to the Light Ball, the held item that doubles the Pikachu's attack stats. Pikachu's Volt Tackle attack, for that matter? Another callback to the Voltecker, Pulse Man's Calling Card. There's Pokémon all over this game. When in fact, it's the other way around. But wait, show the very first thing you see when you start this thing out. What the... Behold the wayward child of Game Freak Stable. Well, one of the wayward children, but we won't get into Click Medic or Magical Taruto kun at this time. Before they became another cash cow in Nintendo's pastures, Game Freak produced the occasional title for the PC Engine or Mega Drive, alongside games like Yoshi, Mendel Palace, and Smart Ball, which, ironically enough, was published by Sony Imagesoft for the Super NES. Pulseman is unmistakably a Genesis game. Heck, it even did a cup of coffee on these shores as part of the ill-fated Sega channel. But that was long before this whole Pokemon thing got off the ground. Nowadays, it's impossible to think of Game Freak doing anything but churning out various pocket monsters, despite their attempts to break this typecasting, such as 2005's Drill Dozer for the GBA. Around the world, chaos is breaking out in both physical and electronic space. But since Mega Man Network transmission is still a decade off, it's up to Pulse Man to get in there and regulate with the power of... Electricity! He can punch and kick from a standing position or crouch, he can perform a jumping overhead kick a la Guile, and if he charges up enough electricity by running or dashing, he can fire projectiles and or bounce around in Voltecker form. Now, while this is technically an import game, and there's plenty of kanji to be had in the level descriptions, the experience itself scraps all of that in favor of the international language. Hardcore 16-bit platforming. But while the graphics are on the higher end of what the Genesis could handle, and the sound and vocal samples are indicative of a higher tier game, unfortunately, the actual controls are a bit less than responsive. And that's unfortunate because you've only got five continues to get through the game's seven levels. No game exists in a vacuum. The threads of history and innovation wind through the whole of the industry. So here, years before Nintendo and Sega got all buddy-buddy with Sonic Mega Collection, is an earlier, more esoteric intersection. As platformers go, it's more shiny than solid, but as history lessons go, it's a perfect example of how to honor your past while still cultivating your current paradigm-shifting mega-hit. Game Freak kept Nintendo buoyed throughout their trying years in the mid-90s, just a couple years removed from the release of Pulse Man. Today you can pick up this little piece of history on the Wii Virtual Console's import section for nine bucks, just a tenth of what a used physical copy would run you these days. And you don't even have to go through the rather arduous process of import modding your Genesis. Yeah. 